Yeah, good morning. Uh, I've just uh, been outside. I'm coming in for a bit of a break. I've just been doing some mulching and, and cleaning up of the yard. Um, you can see my face. I've just been attacked by uh, lantana. It's a plant we have over here in Australia and it's, uh, it's an absolute beast of a plant. It's got little sharp alligator teeth all over the branches and it just grows wild and, and when you're cutting it you've got to be so careful but anyway I got damaged or cut arms and the like so excuse the appearance I haven't been in a bar fight but anyway um, I'll just flip the camera around and we'll have a bit of it up and on okay this is the left and right uh, stabilator hockey sticks uh, I'm going to be upsizing these to the copper clicos all the way through here most of everything else is all upsized. The skins have obviously been fitted. Um, and I'm just going to upsize these so they can all be deburred, primed, and assembled, ready to take the skins. Um, that is about it. I think I've got some number 12 drill bits coming um, for the Y tail spars to take the AM bolts. Just the next size up from a 3 16th, so the bolts slip through a lot easier. Uh, not loosely, but they, they slip through a lot easier. Um, a couple of little tiny um, deburring tools that I've bought as well, just to help me get into these hard to get places. Sometimes these are hard to deburr at the back of these with your conventional little round tool. So, um, and a couple of little tiny uh, round, uh, small very very fine files for just getting in, in, in surfaces like these and that sort of thing that your normal deburring tool doesn't. Anyway so I'm just going to uh, do all this now and come back to you shortly. Okay we are ready to do the fun part, the riveting, um, throwing all these uh, stabilators uh, back together again, inclusive of the Y-tail spar and the Ford hockey sticks. Um, I'm going to just flip the camera around and go through uh, how I'll be approaching it. Throw the glasses on, put that on to five. If I don't put this on to half size uh, video, it seems to, th there's a flashing involved and I think a couple of my earlier videos flashed. Um, it's probably because I've got these really high quality LED lights in here up there and they seem to interfere with the speed of the camera uh, filming I think so anyway I have to always remember to put it on to five sometimes I forget but anyway that's the way it goes so the Ford hockey sticks have a CCP 46 um, and just on these sections here you'll see they're not shown as a CCP 46 you've got to go to another drawing um, and look at those so D D is this part here. DD, ironically, does still have CCP 46s, but it's through the three. Um, there's three rivets going through the spar as well as the rear spar and back into the rib, whereas EE um, has only two of the CCP 46s and one of the CCP41, obviously it's a thinner distance, so just taking note that as you go through these sections, just it does change um, rivet size. The way that I'm doing it, so I remember, as I look at the little cheat sheet here, which says there's 46 rivets going through, and if you sort of count all those through there, obviously there's, there's 46 rivets, and then these will be three, and so, you know, um, uh, Sonic's do a reasonably good job at trying to throw as much information at you as you can, can possibly have so it's up to the individual I guess to ensure that you put those right rivets in um, anyway that's probably a stupid thing to say but I've said it so I'm going to also go through the tightening torques that I've found for these nuts now originally I dry assembled all of this um, together now because there are I'm going to call it a Nilex nut, I think that's what they're called. Uh, I think there, there may be a, another name for them, but they're basically the nut, and I'll just race over to here for a second. They're the little nut that has the nylon type of a inbuilt washer in there, and it's meant to, as you tighten tighten that up, it's meant to give it sort of some 
like a little spring washer, I guess. Now, I've done a bit of searching. I've found something on, on a couple of the forums that does tell you, and I think I have a little note over here somewhere. What I've found is 32 inch pounds. I've got my little torque wrench over there. Um, if I'm doing that wrong, please someone let me know, but uh, that's what I'll be tightening to, uh, tightening them to. Uh, now, just let me also say something that these can only technically be put on once. You, if you dry assemble it and use these nuts, throw it out, get more. They're, they're, they're as cheap as chips. So I've bought another 50, I think it is, coming from Aircraft Spruce. There's a little bling for Aircraft Spruce. They cost me next to nothing to get into the country, so... I'll, I'll let you know as I go, but I'm just gonna, I'm just going to use them once. Uh, I'll, I'll keep a whole bunch of them aside for when I'm assembling many parts of the plane. And if I need more, well, I'll buy more. You know, for, for the sake of, I don't know, let's call it 12 cents each or something stupid like that. I'm just going to use them once. Now uh, the AN bolts, on that matter, don't have to be replaced each and every time, so long as they're, you know not bent or anything like that so here I am starting on the hockey stick side here is the spar of the stabilator the hockey stick little guy goes on to here and I'll be riveting this through this morning might give the old GoPro a bit of a shot this morning and throw him up on a tripod over there to see if that works a little bit better but anyway if it doesn't work it doesn't work I will uh, start this now and come back to you soon goes on the rear side I have done the little uh, angle bracket there which fits into the underside of there and the nose rib one which fits on to that side. I'm going to torque these up now, uh, sorry put the bolts in, torque them up, at least get those bits done, assemble all of the rest of the ribs through here um, and then I can probably do one side of the rear spar and I'll actually sorry I'll put the rear spar on first because it has the uh, dimpled rivets in a couple of locations and then I'll put on one side of the hockey stick hmm my heart's going at a thousand miles an hour that I've made a mistake so uh, I'll, I'll uh, see how I go
Okay, I have now completed all the uh, rivets on both stabilators, excluding the wire tail. I have just laid it in position because I'm still having a bit of a think about it whether I do the spar, the wire tail spar first now, then fit the skins, or um, do the skins on each stabilator and then do the then do the spar. I'm just again apprehensive. I just want to be able to to view through the back of this and just see that the rivets are are pretty much the same as what you know. They're all in, they're all integral or they're nothing's gone wrong with them in the inside I mean it isn't important um, as is other parts of the plane uh, it, it, it's important to make sure that all the rivets are right but you know I'm just uh, gonna have a think about it I'll probably do it like this now I've also I'll probably so I'll start again I'll probably rivet all this together now I think and then do the skins afterwards I think it's better if I put it together this way I have just put a couple of bolts through the tail post section just to align it properly um, if it's not aligned before well it most definitely won't be aligned now so it's all good I think that's it now look at just another thing I've probably mentioned this before and I'm sure a thousand other videos out there do mention the same thing but it's a really good idea to just not take for granted that once you put a Clico in it's in the right spot just throw some rivets in as you go uh, like I, I mean I, I, I dry fitted rivets in it, all of these holes before I put a Clico in just to align it properly it's probably just a, a really good way of ensuring that everything is right I mean there's a rivet there so it just flips in beautifully see that ready to go so I think I'll uh, rivet this now I might have a little bit of a break first have a drink and it's a bit, getting a bit hot here today Okay, and then um, I will come back and it should all be riveted, ready for me to deburr the skins that are just over there and do all of the necessary works on those prior to uh, priming it. And I should have this weekend completed both of these stabilators ready for putting the little tips in, perhaps, and even starting the wings. I'll talk to you this soon. A lot happier that I've done it this way in lieu of trying to do it afterwards. That way you can have a really good look inside there and have a look at those rivets. So I'm happy with that. And I'll tell you what, it's bloody strong now. So it would want to be strong. Um, I'm not saying that it's not strong, but it, you can really feel how, how, how the rigidity of it now. Now I've just got a couple of clamps in here just to help hold it together otherwise it's you know it's a bit sort of floppy and um, that's about about it so I can now set this aside go over to these skins and start to deburr the six million holes that are in those anyway talk with you soon <laughs> 